Hello and welcome to The Entrepreneurial Musician, a coaching service podcast and blog preparing today's musicians for tomorrow's realities. This is TEM 231 titled The Courage to Be Unique. Right off the bat, I need to thank a lot of you. We made it to 150 ratings on Apple Podcasts and to 150 subscribers on YouTube almost simultaneously. Thank you so much to everybody who took the time to do that. It really means a lot. Uh, Next is a push to get to 200. Both of those are a really great way to support the show. I also wanted to let you know a little bit of an announcement. (laughs) This is an announcement that there's going to be an announcement. This is getting a little meta, but uh, no, there's going to be a new show schedule uh, plus a Patreon overhaul are coming later this month. So stay tuned for that. And you're also going to hear a couple of wrinkles today in terms of the show format, but we're kind of, we're tweaking things here at TEM. It's uh, it's been a while. Let's get to the episode here. At the end of February, I hosted a big Brass Junkies tuba workshop. Um, I am posting a lengthy TEM report, by the way, for Patreon patrons, detailing all of the things that went right and all of the things that I would do differently. As I started getting into in TEM 230, uh, we changed pricing models, platforms, the structure of the event itself, how it was archived, how it was funded, basically everything. So if you're looking to host any online events and are a Patreon patron of TEM, then be sure to check out this TEM report. Uh, It's going to detail all of it, and I can probably save you some uh, some hassle. So and it, it, it all went, the spoiler is that it all went incredibly well. There were a couple of like tech hiccups, which I dealt with, but uh, you know, you have to learn how many times have I preached into this mic that you have to learn by doing right. And I was super prepared and there were a couple of things like there was one setting that, that I thought changed the, a, a time zone in terms of like the entire system. And I inadvertently only changed one event. So then another one didn't quite pop up when it was supposed to, I can save you a lot of time. So uh, anyway, Uh, The reason I bring up this workshop is because my favorite quote of the workshop had nothing to do with tuba at all and didn't even pertain directly to music, although that was in fact the context that it was mentioned in. That quote came from the amazing Roger Bobo, and uh, he is a tuba legend who has crossed to the highest points of the profession. Um, He's he's climbed, I mean, to the top of the orchestral mountain. He was with the L.A. Phil for 25 years. As a soloist, he's appeared all over the world. He appeared on The Tonight Show as a tuba soloist uh, and a master teacher and a conductor. He is a true maestro uh, in the tuba world. And uh, he said something that was an absolute gem. He said, it takes a lot of courage to be unique. That phrase literally made me pump my fist on camera when he said it. And I immediately thought that I had to share it with all of you in the TEM audience. The question is, why does it take courage to be unique? The reason is because no one ever has to explain their reasons for blending in. If you enter college the fall immediately after you graduate from high school, you won't ever have to explain yourself to anyone but decide to take a couple of years off between high school and college to like pursue a project or some kind of passion, you will end up having to justify your decision to some people. You will never have to explain yourself for staying in a good paying job that you don't really care for, but decide to quit to follow your dreams. There will be questions asked. As a side note, uh, my best friend Russell recently made that decision Actually, it was a little over a year ago, and it was right before COVID. It was actually very bad timing for him to make that decision, but he is crazy happy. Uh, He's fulfilled. He's bringing in more. He's bringing in plenty of money while working for himself, and he's working long hours, but he's loving it, and he now has the flexibility to do what he wants when he wants to do it. Uh, he's, I'm very proud of him for making that brave decision, and I'll be honest. I wasn't sure if he was supposed, if he should do it. And he asked me my advice. We were the best men in each other's weddings, uh, but yeah, he he did it and and he has nailed it. So again, you never have to explain yourself for staying in the job. But if you leave, people are gonna maybe ask some questions. 
You will never have to explain setting up a teaching studio, like a private teaching studio, whose format is weekly private lessons at the same time each week, but have some private lessons and some small group lessons and trade lessons with a teacher on a different instrument um, in town, and you're going to have some explaining to do if it doesn't get traction right away. In any career in the music business, there is a well-trodden path that has been taken by many people before you, whatever it is that you're doing. And for the record, this might actually be the best path for you in whatever instance you're thinking of right now. But if you take the path everyone before you has taken and you do everything that they've done, don't be surprised when you blend in with everyone else. And blending in is a big problem these days. Your people can't support your art until they know you exist. That's pretty obvious, right? But I think it still needs to be said. Uh, so do stuff that makes you stand out. But be warned. This is where the courage comes in. Once you share a podcast with the world, if you do it long enough, you will get a one-star rating on Apple Podcasts, which means, and I've got one, I've got a two star, I've got a three star, I've got a couple fours, and I got a whole bunch of fives. But especially that one and two star ratings, those are people that heard TEM, thought, um, thought that it was mediocre or worse enough that they actually logged into Apple Podcasts, sat down, and took the time to warn others. <laughs> if you talk into one of these things, and if you're listening only, I'm pointing at my microphone. You are, if you do it long enough, you keep showing up, you will get one star ratings, period. Once you record an album of music that isn't usually played on the clarinet, people will have opinions about it, about what you played, about how you played it, about why you played it in the first place, about why someone as young as you, let's say, feels justified even recording an album before putting in X amount of time first, about why someone so old or so obscure or so whatever is fill in the blank. Why are you doing whatever it is, right? There's always, there's always low hanging fruit, if you will, for these people who rather than create because they don't have the courage to create, share and be unique themselves, they're going to come for you sometimes aggressively, sometimes passively, but they will. When you share art that is unique and is something the world has never seen or heard before, it challenges people. It challenges their assumptions. Um, it sometimes take a, takes away their excuses for not sharing equally bold art with the world. And people do not like that. If they say clarinets, I'm not sure why clarinets are on my mind, but they are. Clarinets shouldn't be playing X kind of music. And then they also say all of the standard clarinet literature has been recorded to death then they actually have come up with a foolproof excuse for not making their own album. No one is hiding behind logic like this um, will appreciate. No one who is hiding, no one who is hiding behind logic like this will appreciate you showing them, not others, the that their logic is crap and that they are just hiding. Like they will not appreciate that. So they will speak up against your art or stew over it quietly. But we have to make art that is true to ourselves. And if we want to monetize it, it also needs to stand out. That takes courage, but that courage is inside of you. So make it happen. All right, we're going to do something called the Pedal Note Media Minute, which is just going to be, well, it's going to be a minute. I think that was kind of self-explanatory, uh, talking about what's going on here at Pedal Note Media. And then we're going to close with a little bit more content, which is a new thing that I'm going to be doing every episode as well. Uh, so this is the first ever. You feel excited, don't you? You feel honored that you're here for this. This is the first ever Pedal Note Media Minute presented by Parker Mouthpieces. A thank you to Parker Mouthpieces for providing the hosting for TEM. Parker Mouthpieces offers fine, customizable component mouthpieces for horn, trombone, euphonium, and tuba, including the Andrew Hits Artist Model Tuba Mouthpiece. You can find out more at parkermouthpieces.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. 
So the for those of you who don't know, Petalone Media is the digital media company that I founded with my um, partner, Lance LaDuke. And we have since, it's been a couple of years now, but added a third partner, Will Houchin. The other podcast that we put out is called The Brass Junkies. And uh, this is particularly relevant to the TEM app, uh, audience here. Next week's Brass Junkies episode uh, features Norwegian euphonium player Bente Ilvold, which is a pretty good job of butchering her name. Uh, I'm pronouncing Norwegian correctly is not my forte, but uh, this episode is it, it almost could be a TEM episode. She talks. She's fascinating. She talks about mindset about creating art that is true to you. She talks about commissions. She's commissioned seven major works for the euphonium. She talks about forming artistic partnerships. She has a euphonium tuba duo. She has a, a euphonium percussion duo. She has uh, appeared with string quartets. I mean, like not necessarily instrumentations that you would expect. She's fascinating. I'm telling you, there's very little euphonium talk in this thing. And like I said, it could be a TEM episode, so check that out. Uh, events. One that's announced and one that's coming. Sunday, uh, March 21st, there is a Winning the Audition with Chris Martin, who's the principal trumpeter of the New York Philharmonic. You can learn more about that at uh, pedalomedia.com slash events. Uh, and also, um, there are two TEM events that are coming, which I will be announcing next week. One is about uh, podcasting, because uh, I get a lot of questions about that through TEM Coaching. And the other is about positioning your career uh, for after COVID, which is, uh, knock on wood, is coming kind of soon. There are some actions that you can take to position yourself to take advantage of the changed marketplace. So what I was teasing in terms of the content was that uh, I'm thinking about closing each episode with a quote. And uh, the first one is uh, by Ginny Rometty, who is the former CEO of IBM. And she said, growth and comfort do not coexist. That screamed at me. Growth and comfort do not coexist. Uh, this is what like Seth Godin refers to as tension which is when you're not sure whether this is going to go well or whether this is not going to go well. Uh, circling back, by the way, to the, uh, to the Brass Junkies Tubo workshop, the interviewing the really big names that we had, uh, that was not tension for me because I've done so many interviews. There are some times when I do a great job and then other times when I could have done a better job. But I'm, I'm not nervous about interviews, even the ones that are really difficult and the people who don't really give you much to work with and... Like, I've dealt with that. I can do that, no problem. Uh, and I taught myself. I've done that so many times, no problem. You know what gave me tension this time was the tech, was the tech side, which I'm going to be talking about in that TEM report. The tech side, I wasn't sure whether it was going to go well or not because, like I already said, the brand new platform, brand new format, brand new pricing. Am I charging? And pricing is like a really big thing, right? There's going to be another TEM event uh, about that and possibly just a, a course, a short course on that because I get a lot of questions about pricing. So that's where I had attention. Uh, I got a call um, uh, back in December to play a gig. Uh, and this was this is the only gig that I have played in a calendar year now. Uh, it was outdoors, and and I thought from the email I thought that it was a brass ensemble, which I've played in a lot of brass ensembles. But I thought it was like a large brass ensemble, meaning that I was going to have to be playing in kind of like an orchestral type of a style, which. I'll admit I've not been playing that thing every single day during uh, during the pandemic because I just have not been all that motivated. I've been playing the, the bass over here uh, lately more than the tuba because this is brand new and challenging and it's not reminding me that everything has been canceled because uh, I have never been asked to play the bass for money because I've been playing for a couple of months. But anyway, I thought it was brass ensemble, which would have gone fine, but I was like, I was a little bit nervous. Then I got some more details and I heard it was a brass quintet gig. Uh, and instantly the tension was gone. Uh, and there were a couple of challenging parts, but with I've played over a thousand brass quintet concerts between Dallas Brass and Boston Brass. And some of those were crazy high pressure. 
I knew it was going to go fine. Uh, here's the thing, is that you have to seek out opportunities. You, me, us, we need to seek out opportunities for growth as entrepreneurs. Give a presentation that makes you uncomfortable. Switch to a new platform that makes you uncomfortable, like I did with the workshop. Uh, and I didn't just switch to to create tension and so that I could grow. I mean, this was we we thought that there was something that was potentially better, and it turns out it absolutely was, and it was the right choice. But it would have been easier to just stay uh, on Thinkific where we were, which was more of an online course platform, which you can do live events, but it's not built for it. We switched platforms, and it was you know, it made me nervous, but everything went well. Um, reach out to someone that makes you uncomfortable. There's like a there's a long list of things that you can do, but the point is that these situations will only rarely find you. You have to make them happen in order to grow, and and that's uh, the message that I want to leave you. And the beautiful thing about teaching, I don't consider myself your teacher, any of your teachers. Uh, but when I share something like this, or when I actually teach a student on the tuba, and I'm talking about discipline, or I'm talking about, I always end up practicing that thing that I was teaching about that following week. And so when I speak into this microphone and tell you all that you have to be proactive and create opportunities for growth rather than choosing comfort, by default, I always end up taking those actions myself, which is even if I got no other benefits from this podcast, which I actually get a lot of, uh, that uh, that would be plenty for all of the work that goes into it. Thank you to everyone for listening, subscribing, leaving a rating and a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get TEM. And simply for your attention, the most valuable commodity any of us have to give. TEM is produced by Will Houchin and is a part of the Pedal Note Media Podcast Network. The theme music for TEM is played by Ben Barron, Rich Kelly, Daniel LaPelle, and myself, Andrew Hitz. For show notes, the TEM blog, and to learn more about TEM coaching, please visit our new website, tem.fm. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and please subscribe to the YouTube channel. All right, that's going to do it for another episode of The Entrepreneurial Musician. Thank you.